Hi everyone, I've had a lot of questions about making groups in D2L and using the groups tool, which is really good because a lot of you're realizing using groups is a great way to differentiate your learning inside of D2L and when you're learning online. So I'm going to show you how to use a groups tool. Once you're in your course, you have to go in and find the course admin icon. So most of your courses will look just like this. And if you click the little down arrow below your nav bar, you'll see the course admin tools. So click on course admin. Scroll down until you see groups, and there's groups here under learning management. So I'm going to click on groups, and now I'm ready to set up my groups. You have to give it a name, you have to give it a category. So this isn't where I actually set up my group, this is just the name of the groups. So this might be my reading groups, call it whatever you want. For whatever reason you're using the groups tool for, call your group that. You can give it a description if you'd like to, you don't have to. And then moving down, here's where you get to the important things. For us and what we need to do, the thing you're going to want to use is number of groups, no auto enrollments. Don't really worry about these right now because I'm pretty sure the way most of you are going to use it is to create groups and assign those groups to certain things. So some of you may want to use single member, uh, member specific groups. That is actually where the groups tool will create a group for every user in your class. So if you had 20 kids in your class, it'll make 20 different groups for all of your students and you can assign individual things to them. But for what I think you're going to need to do and what you want to do, number of groups, no auto enrollments is what we're going to choose. Let's just say for fun, we're going to make two groups. These are our reading groups. You don't need to put in a prefix really. And that's all we're going to worry about. Don't worry about advanced properties or additional options. That's it. So give it a name, put a description in if you want, choose number of groups, no auto enrollment, Pick a number of groups you want to make. It can be one, can be two, can be five. You can always come back later or, and you don't have to fill them all either. And then we're going to go down and save right here. So now I've got my reading group set up. I've got group one and group two because I told it to make two groups and you can see that I have no members here. And now you can do, keep going in and doing this new categories. You could have reading groups, math groups, whatever you want to differentiate for, whatever you want to create groups for, you can do it. If you want to change the name of your reading groups, you can do that go with colors or whatever it might be up to you. So I've got the blue group and the orange group. Why not? So there's my reading groups, blue and orange, zero members. Now I'm going to click on the blue group and I'm going to add members. So there's my blue group and I'm going to enroll users. We already saw that I had zero back in another screen. So I'm going to enroll users. And now here we are in the enroll users area. You'll see your whole class list here. I only have a few uh, test enrolled students here. You'll see your whole class list. And all you need to do is check them off. Check them off. This is my blue group and then save. And now my orange group, there they are. I'm gonna enroll users in the orange group. And I've checked off my two people I want in the orange group. Again, it can be two, three, four, it can be one. It doesn't have to be, it can be as many as, or as little as you check off. So there we go. Now I've got my reading group set up, two different groups with one member in the blue group, two members in the orange group. Now I've got my group set up. Here's where the fun stuff happens. So we're going to head back to the main page of your course. And now that we have the group set up, anywhere inside the course, whether we're in discussions, content, whatever assignments, in the news, in the announcements, anywhere you are inside the course, you have the ability to release things to only those groups. So let's say I had some work to give to one of my groups. I'm going to go to make a new announcement. I want them to do a read along and I'm going to put a video in here that I want them to read along with. So whatever it may be, you're going to put your stuff in the news here. So I just grabbed a video from YouTube and I'm going to embed it. Now this might be only for my blue group or my orange group. I don't want the whole class to see this. So this is, is why you want to use groups. So I would type some more instructions in here, tell them what I want them to do, all that kind of stuff. So when's it available? It's available now. I can add an attachment, a document. I can record some audio, video, give them some more explanation. But what I want to do to make sure that this is only assigned to that group is additional release conditions. So I'm going to create and attach release conditions. So click that, select condition type, and the condition type is class list. You'll see here, and it's a group enrollment. So I'm going to click on that and now it's a group enrollment and I'm going to go down and select my group. So remember those groups we made, the red, uh, the blue and the orange, there they are. So now I'm going to assign that to the blue group and I've created that release condition. So that means 
only the people in the blue group can see that video that I've posted up there and I'm going to publish that. So now when students log into my course, only the student that's in that group will see this read along. That's how that works. I can do those same release conditions in any other tools inside the course. So let's just say inside a discussion. If I want to create a new discussion, I'm going to create a new forum. And here's where we'll have our responses. So that's my responses and I'll add a new topic, whatever that was called the read along. I'm going to get them to summarize the story. I'm just making this up and I'm going to save that. But let's say I only want that to be available to one of my groups. So I'm going to go to restrictions and there you see release conditions. So just same as we saw over in the announcements a minute ago, I'm going to create and attach a release condition for this discussion. The condition type, same as we saw before, it's class list and it's group enrollment. Once I've selected that group enrollment, now I can choose my group. There's that group. My, I'm going to choose the orange group this time and I'm going to create that release condition. So only the people that are in my orange group can see this discussion that I just made. No other students will see it. And when you post something, you'll see that it has release conditions. So that is a quick way to show you how you can use groups. So the first thing you have to do is set up that group by going into your course admin, which I showed you at the start. Then once you have your groups there, whether you're in announcements or discussions or wherever you may be, you can set up a release condition to only allow that content or whatever it may be to be seen by that group. I hope that helps with groups. Give it a try, play around, and uh, you'll have the hang of this in no time.